I'm just gonna say this right off the bat. This is going to be a boring video. This is gonna be a nerdy fucking video because it's gonna involve some numbers. It's gonna involve some mathematics. And it's gonna involve people counting over 20. So even if the YouTube order is wearing sandals, he can't even count that high and he can go fuck himself. <laughs> now look, I'm a numbers guy. I budget shit. I budget my time because I'm an impatient New Yorker that fucking hates waiting. I budget my money because I like to know what I can and can't afford. I deal with numbers because I'm a logical person. So when it comes to Mass Effect Andromeda's multiplayer, or any kind of game for that matter, I tend to crunch some numbers. How long does it take me to rank up? How many challenges can I do? How long do these challenges take? How many games will it take to complete a certain challenge or collect shit? Whatever the fuck it is, every game has quite a bit of counting, and this game has a lot of counting to do. And the more you count this motherfucker, the more you realize BioWare seriously doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. The fucking math in this game is horrendously horrible. This is nothing like Mass Effect 3. And in order to get people to play this shit more, and more importantly, buy microtransactions for money, the numbers show they don't know what the fuck they're doing. People who play Dragon Age will argue that their multiplayer game took something like 2,000 hours or 2,500 hours or whatever the fuck it is to complete their whole collection. So they're probably laughing at Mass Effect 3 numbers and probably at the Andromeda numbers. But you would think Bioware would have learned from some shit. No, nope, they didn't learn a fucking thing. So let's fuck some more shit up while we're at it. Now, nothing in these numbers that I'm gonna tell you guys is anything that hasn't been done before. You can visit Reddit to get this shit or the brain dead unofficial Bioware forums where their toxic and shitty community migrated to. <laughs> oh, that bunch of putrid toxic fucks now have a side of their own. Bioware said, fuck it, we're getting rid of our forum so these assholes made their own. <laughs> but look, what I'm showing you guys is nothing people haven't done already. It just adds my personal touches to the motherfucker. Now, I have no intention of getting into the balance of the game, like, you know, the guns and powers and damage modifiers and all that fucking crap. You know, that's the real nerdy shit because people have to fucking sit there, shoot an enemy, record the damage, then do that shit all over again with different items, different guns, different distances, ah, oh, fuck all that bullshit. I want to focus on two parts. Ranking up your characters all the way and maxing out your manifest where you get all the items in the game. So let's start with the easy one, ranking up your characters, because that's nice and simple. And I'm not going to lie to you. I have all this shit written down because there is no way in hell I'll remember all these fucking numbers. <laughs> so if it sounds like I'm actually reading shit from somewhere, it's because I am. There was no fucking way I was going to be able to do all this math in my goddamn head. I'm fucking smart, but I'm not that goddamn smart. So in Andromeda, we now have... 28 specific characters. Initially it started at 26, but obviously they rolled out some of these new events and shit like that. They rolled out two extra characters, so now we have 28. However, each one needs to be ranked up separately. This is different from Mass Effect 3, where if you chose, say, a Vanguard, you ranked up all the Vanguards at the same time. So in this game, you have your 26 individual characters, plus the two that they've added over the couple weeks, versus the six classes where you ranked all that up in Mass Effect 3. Now, obviously, that sounds like a big jump, but Mass Effect 3 had the promotion system. It's sort of like a prestige system, similar to Call of Duty and whatnot. You know, where you reset your character back down to one, you start that shit all over again. I won't get into the promotion system, but... Bioware used that as part of the connection to the single player and they added that as a way to get people to play the game longer. So let's just start from the beginning, look at one character at a time. In Mass Effect Andromeda, it takes 2.1 million XP to rank up all the way. If you want to get exact, it's 2,127,000. That's the exact number. No clue where the fuck they came up with that one. They just picked a random number out of their ass and said, here, fuck it, this is 2.1 million. <laughs> Anyways, if you were to play the highest level difficulty right now, I'm talking just going straight to gold games, you're going to get roughly anywhere from like 95,000 to say 105,000 XP per game. Now look, I've been in rooms where the totals have been as low as like 80,000, 85,000, or whatever the fuck it was. I've been in rooms where the high total is like 120,000, and that's without boosters. But for fuck's sake, let's just say we're going to go with the average of saying 100,000 is the example. And yes, I'm aware of the XP boosters and whatnot that you get in this game, but I just want to focus on base numbers without all the additional help and other shit like that. So 2.1 million XP divided by 100,000 XP per game that you're going to get for gold, that's about 21 games just to rank up. 21 plus, if you will. And again, that's going from a level 1 character who should probably run a few silver matches first to get some power before they just dive into gold in this motherfucker. But again, this is just some rudimentary math here. So 21 plus games. Each gold game itself takes about 15 minutes or so to complete. You know, with a party of friends, it's obviously not going to last that long. If you're farming Firebase Zero, Outlong Gold, it should go a lot quicker. The higher the level you are, the quicker the game will go. But if you're playing bigger maps, 
and you get the shittier objectives like a fucking wave six upload against the goddamn cat that's a significantly harder challenge i've been in 12 minute gold matches i've been in 30 minute gold matches where i had to carry three dead asses the whole fucking game but again for the sake of speed let's just say it's 15 minutes per game now outside of the game you have loading screens you have the lobby wait time you visit the in-game store, you're waiting for friends, waiting for another lobby, you're taking a shit, getting a drink, whatever the fuck you're doing. So let's just say that's a few more minutes you have to wait to get into games. Add another two to three minutes to that motherfucker. And I'm just going to round up and say the grand total is 18 minutes from one room to another. 18 minutes from the time you start a match to 18 minutes to the next time you start another match. So 21 games times 18 minutes apiece, you're talking 378 minutes. Now... Divide that number by 60 minutes so you get an hourly equation. And you're looking at over six hours to rank up. More like six and a half, if you will. Six and a half fucking hours of game time just for one character. And yes, you can speed that up with boosters. You can speed that up by playing with friends, spending less time in lobbies, or farming Firebase Zero against the outlaws. But for the majority of people out there who don't have these luxuries, it's going to take six and a half hours of game time just to hit rank 20 by doing gold only. Now, let's compare that to Mass Effect 3. For comparison's sake, especially since this game is new without DLC, I want to look at the base version of the game, you know, that didn't have platinum difficulty yet, that didn't award the extra XP and shit for like extracting and whatnot. A base character needed 2.5 million XP to go from rank 1 to rank 20. And that's without the character cards that many people might remember after I promoted characters and shit like that. So we're just talking base level, rank 1, to rank 20. A gold game, before they started giving that extraction bonus, gave people anywhere from around 375,000 to 440 XP. And keep in mind, that's going by unknown map, unknown enemy, because, you know, if you chose the map and the enemy and shit like that, it gave you less XP. So, ran the match, on average, let's say 400,000 XP. I think it eventually bumped up towards like 425 per game. But on the safe side, look, let's just say 400,000 XP per game. 2.5 million XP divided by 400,000 XP equals about six games. I mean, six and a quarter. Seriously, it took six games just to rank up your characters. And fuck it, let's even round that shit up to seven fucking games. Seven total games to go from rank one to rank 20. And back in the day, gold took forever. And that was part of the fact that, you know, we didn't have boosters and shit like that. We didn't have the amps. We didn't have some of those other really good characters to make the games fly by. Those base vanilla characters were somewhat unremarkable. There were a couple of good ones in there. But aside from those few decent ones, we didn't get those massive buffs to take on gold for the next few months. It took well over 20 minutes during the vanilla stages of Mass Effect 3 just to get past gold, and usually 25 minutes. So, let's round that up even further. Let's just say it took 30 minutes when Mass Effect 3 launched just to beat gold, because obviously the lobby time took forever, the loading screens were even longer. So I'm gonna round this shit up. Seven games times 30 minutes. That's going to equal 210 minutes. Now, again, divide that shit by 60, and we're talking only three and a half hours. That's it. Three and a half fucking hours. And again, this is when the game was brand new, because over time, we got all that extra shit, and we were finishing games in like 20 minutes or so after that motherfucker. So in theory, it would take someone three and a half hours to rank up a whole section of characters. All your vanguards, all your soldiers, all your sentinels. Three and a half hours times... Your six classes, the whole section of this motherfucker, and you have 21 hours of gameplay to rank up the entire roster of Mass Effect 3. That's it. That's literally a day of binging on gaming. And I'm sure some streamers and their Red Bull and Monster Energy drinks are like, Psh, I got this. <laughs> oh man, those fucking low life piece of human garbage motherfuckers prostituting themselves with money sitting in front of a goddamn computer screen all day playing video games. They got that in one day of not working in their fucking life, working off other people's scratch. Anyway, I'm going to get into fucking Twitch streamers. However, let's get back to Andromeda. You need six and a half hours for one character. You can't level up a whole section like you did before, so you need to take all 28 characters. 28 characters times 6.5 hours, you get 182 hours. 182 hours just to get all the characters maxed out. I mean, shit, if you want to even lower that down to 26 characters, you know, which is what the game shipped with, that's still 169 hours. That's seven straight days of playing. So one day, nonstop, versus seven fucking days nonstop. In theory, you could promote your characters in Mass Effect 3 eight fucking times over and still rank them up faster than you could do that in Mass Effect Andromeda. Seriously, what the fuck? 
That's the difference we're talking about. One day versus seven full days. Now that wasn't bad enough. Oh shit, let's get into your fucking manifest because this is where the real math comes into play. Basically all the items in the game, like your guns, your equipment mods and whatnot, this takes the most time. For the most part, what people want are the ultra rare cards and the guns and that takes the longest to collect. And the time that you're gonna be going for all the ultra rares, you're probably gonna be collecting all the lesser shit. But realistically, it's smarter to collect all the lesser shit first before you go after the big ticket items. But I'm not getting into that bullshit. For the sake of the equation, Let's just say a motherfucker wants to be a cowboy. Let's say you want to collect all the ultra rares from the very beginning. You're just going to go straight to the baller packages, the highest fucking price shit in the game. Fuck the easy shit. You want the good shit right off the bat. Bioware fucked this one up just as well. Again, let's stick with the base game of Mass Effect 3. Over time, they obviously added platinum. They added more credits. But like my rank up example, I want to stick to the beginning of the game when it first released. Right now in Andromeda, we launched with 13 ultra rare guns and then four ultra rare characters. Then in addition to that, they added another ultra rare character and another gun for a grand total of 19 items within the first month of the game. Each one of those items has 10 upgrades. So 19 ultra rare versus 10 upgrades, 190 cards you need to collect. Back at Mass Effect 3's launch, we had seven fucking ultra rare guns. That's it, that's all you needed to get. Seven, motherfucker. In addition, there were five guns that were part of those weekend operations. We, you know, if the community completed a certain task, we got rewarded with a commendation pack that gave us an automatic ultra rare gun. There were five of those motherfuckers. So 12 total, but only seven were located in the store. So 70 cards compared to 190 right now. The agreed upon guess back in the day as to how much money it would take to get an ultra rare card was about 1 million credits. For every 1 million you spent on the highest level packs, you got an ultra rare card. And I will say that I probably had better luck than most people. 1 million was probably the average, but I guarantee you I had a much better average rate and drop rate than everyone else. So in theory, Mass Effect Andromeda needs 190 million credits to unlock all the ultra rares. And Mass Effect 3 needed 70 million. And for those of you who are interested and wanting to know what the ultra rare total was for Mass Effect 3, total, all the DLC, all five DLC packs, you would have needed 222 cards. So fucking two years of the game, they had a grand total of 222 cards. That's only 32 cards more than we have right now in the fucking base game of Andromeda. Are you fucking kidding me? So the math in this motherfucker. In Mass Effect 3, the base game offered about 75,000 credits per gold game when it launched. Now, obviously, it increased after that, but I'm going to stick with that number for now. So if you needed 70 million credits, you would have needed to have played 933 games in Mass Effect 3 to max out your manifest. Now, let's go by the math based on how long the games took. And this is where I have to reach. Because <laughs> now I'm getting to big fucking numbers. 933 games times 30 minutes per game. That's either... 27,990 minutes or 466.5 hours of gameplay and if you average that out that's about 19 and a half total days played on this motherfucker of course people managed to learn ways to farm enemies farm gold run matches quicker earn credits quicker but it was a slow process however it ain't got shit on the current version of andromeda personally I really think the drop rate in Andromeda is a little bit better than the 1 million per ultra rare. Obviously, I just did a video. I did a live video showing what 2.6 million credits looks like. I ended up getting seven ultra rares, but like I said, I think that drop rate is a little bit higher than normal people. I feel like a fair ratio at this point is 1.5 for every million. So if I were to spend 2 million credits, I would probably get three ultra rare cards. That's about as average as you can get, and I think a lot of people can agree with that number, even at the highest rate. Let's say one ultra rare for every $500,000 spent, but I think that's a little bit too high to be honest. But in theory, 190 ultra rares would need 190 million credits just like Mass Effect 3. That's by if you're going with the old math. So when you beat gold here, and your maximum you can get is 55,000 credits. Let's just do the math on this motherfucker. 190 million credits divided by 55,000 credits, the maximum you can get in a gold game, equates to 3,455 games just to collect 190 million credits. And when you multiply 3,455 games by my gaming estimate earlier of 18 minutes, that comes out to 62,182 minutes or 1,036 hours of gameplay. This is the equivalent of 43 fucking days playing the game. That's more than double Mass Effect 3. And that's just for the base game. They're still going to roll out DLC in the future. And they're going to get other shit in the fucking future. But right now, they're fucking us over with no grease. 
trying to collect all this fucking shit in the game. Now, personally, I think the drop rate is a little bit better than that. I'm just going by the old Mass Effect 3 drop rate ratio. If you go by what I think the ratio is currently, which is about 1.5 per 1 million credits, the math comes out to around 126 million point six 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 credits, whatever the fuck that shit is. So again, for math convenience, let's just say 125 million. You need 125 million credits to max out your manifest based on what I think the drop rate is right now. Still going by 55,000 credits per game, that is still 2,273 games to be played. Or if you want to go by the other time frames, 40,909 minutes or 681.82 hours of gameplay. That is 28 and a half days played just to max out your ultra rare inventory in this fucking game. Now, neither one of these formulas took into account the other shit in the game. Like, you know, the commons, the uncommons, you know, the bronze, silver, and gold items in this motherfucker. You know, that shit could drop in any of the premium packs over time as well. However, that's a shitload of time even with this higher drop rate that I said for Ultra Rares. So let's just recap BioWare's problem for a second. To rank up all your Mass Effect 3 characters, it took you about 21 hours. That's it. That's all you needed in Mass Effect 3. To rank up all your Mass Effect Andromeda characters, it's going to take you about 182 hours or seven and a half days. You've gone from a one day gaming binge to a seven day gaming binge with no eating, sleeping, dreaming. <laughs> oh man, good luck to the video game prostitutes on Twitch to pull that shit off. Your base manifest in Mass Effect 3, in theory, only took you about 19 and a half days to max out that motherfucker. Playing on the highest level difficulty from the very beginning. Your base manifest in Mass Effect Andromeda could take 43 days if you use the same drop rate like they did in Mass Effect 3. Now, if you think that the drop rate is improved and you agree with my math, the grand total would still be 28 and a half days to actually max all that shit out. Bioware, do you really think this is fucking sane? Is this what you were shooting for? Do you see exactly how bad the increase in time is from Mass Effect 3 to Mass Effect Andromeda? And you add in all the complaints that people have about this motherfucker? We haven't gotten to the DLC yet. Shit, you keep releasing cars and items every Thursday or whatever the fuck it is. By the way, I do like that. I just wish those shits weren't ultra rare, mototherfucker. But even with the current 190 ultra rare cards, that is going to grow. And it's going to get worse. You combine that with the scale down powers right now, the balance issues, the connection issues, the squishiness of our characters, the lack of punch most of these guns have, and you see how badly things are in the game right now. So I'm going to predict something right now. I'm going to predict a little bit of shit right here. The economy and the setup of the game has to change. Now, obviously, EA and Bioware want microtransactions to fuel impatient motherfuckers into buying shit from the store. Obviously, that's exactly what they're looking to do. But at the same time, you need people to play the fucking game. If you're driving away fans with bad decisions in the regular game and your shitty implementation of a system doesn't seem fair, you see exactly how bad things can get. You expect people to buy your microtransactions, but after they realize the time invested needed without this shit, that's fucking ridiculous. Before, it was 21 hours to rank up my characters. Cool. Before, it was just under 20 days to get all the shit that I want in the game. Fine. People would say, oh, you know, I could throw a little money here and there. I could put a little into the store to get this pack. But otherwise, right now, you're telling people, wait a second, it could take me 43 fucking days to max this shit out? You want me to buy that shit? Get the fuck out of here, man. Look, I would bet my left nut that something is going to change. Whether it's going to be the cost of the premium packs, whether it's going to be the drop rate of the ultra rare cards, whether you're going to increase in the XP or the credits we earn from the store, whatever the fuck it is, something is going to change. And they're going to do it down the road when people start leaving the game and the play numbers start falling off drastically. And by play numbers, I mean the microtransaction numbers. It's one thing to dangle a carrot in front of someone and you hope that the motherfucker will bite. But if you're trying to wave a whole fucking salad in front of our face and the majority of video gamers probably wouldn't even touch a salad anyway. <laughs> you know, the same way a Twitch streamer wouldn't touch a job application. But if you're trying to wave this shit in front of our face, say, oh yeah, look at all these microtransactions you can buy, people are just gonna say, fuck you. And they're gonna go play something else. Your game has to change, Bioware. There's no way around that. You know it, EA knows it, and the fans especially know it because if you continue this bullshit, people are going to continue to leave the game. They might as well just go back to Mass Effect and say, fuck it, I'll just play that shit if it's even better, man. You have a nice little window right now. There is no major game on the slate coming out in the next couple of months. None. The only competition you have is a Destiny reveal and a Call of Duty Twitch stream. That's it. Those are the only games, but they're not coming out until the fall. You have this entire summer to fix your product. That way people can come play this motherfucker. Then you can start microtransactioning the shit out of people. But if you leave this shit in the state it's in right now, I will guarantee you people will leave this motherfucker and that microtransaction budget that you're hoping to get 
is not going to be there. Fix your fucking game. Fix the fucking math in the game. And then people will start playing this motherfucker again. Anyways, you knew this fucking rant was coming. <laughs> As always, rate, comment, subscribe, and all that good shit. And I'll see you guys in the next video.